So Roblox has yet again made improvements to the audio API and they've added a lot of new features like for example directional audio, something to do with audio echo and few more, which I'm going to present right now. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. And I'm going to show the features in studio first and later on I'm going to overview the forum post, which is going to have more information. But for now, I first need to do a basic audio API setup. So I just do it right now. And I'm just going to insert a part and this one is just going to be named player part. And the two instances that we are going to need is going to be the audio player as well as the audio emitter. And now I need to connect these two with another instance, which is a wire. Where if I go down to the properties, I need to set the source to the audio player and the target to the audio emitter. And I also need to find a sound for the player, so let me just do it right now. And I feel like this song should be good. I'm just going to copy the ID and place it under the audio player. And I can just delete the sound instance. Now, if I play it right now, I'm not going to be able to hear anything yet. And that's because we need to do two things. One is to add a script into the audio player, which is just going to do local audio player is equal to the script.parent. And then I need to do audio player and then play. Now, this is just going to play the audio, but one more thing that we need is going to be an audio listener that thankfully in this update, we don't have to actually create manually. If I go to the sound service, we have a new property called default listener location, which I can set to the camera, the character or the default option, which I'm guessing is set to none right now, but I'm just going to choose the camera where now if I do a play test, all of a sudden we can hear the audio. And I'm just going to mute it for now. If I just go to the workspace and the camera, we have the audio listener right here with a wire connected. And the wire connects the audio listener to the audio device output, which is streaming the audio to, in my case, the headphones. But let me cover another thing with this update now, which is going to be the audio emitter. Here we have the emission tab with the distance, which I covered in my previous video. This is just going to make the audio quieter the further we are. So if I just zoom my camera out, it's going to be quiet around right here. And I can of course increase the distance, but there isn't really a need for that now. Now the more important thing is going to be the angle attenuation. And this one, if I just open, you can suddenly see something different. We basically just have a bunch of buttons and this spectrum right here, which we can add points to by just left clicking. And since this is the custom option, PC is just going to create the circle. And what this one is doing, you can think of the spectrum as if I were to, for example, just have it on top of the part right here. And I'm going to assume that this direction is the front of the part. But anyways, if I keep increasing it, it's going to higher the volume and hold on because something broke. Now, because the audio player is not looping great. Anyways, right now if I add the circle, again here we have an angle and the volume this basically means that we are setting a circle basically around the part where the audio is going to be heard right now since we only have two points it's just going to make the circle but if i were to press on a different spot suddenly we have a red curve and now this is going to be the new area where the audio is going to be emitted to so if i were to completely just remove this back part and set it like this, if I just go behind the part now, I'm not going to be able to hear the audio. This is basically just setting the direction and the area in which the audio is going to be again emitted to. So if I were to move my camera like this, it's again going to be in this zone. So I'm going to be able to hear the audio. And here I'm just going to leave it again. And I don't know how many of you are going to realize on how big it actually is. Since let's just say that we had a wall somewhere. Like for example right here. And previously without the audio emitter angle attenuation, if I were to just remove everything, we can hear the audio even if it's behind the wall. But what I can do right now is for example just muffle it like this. So now if I just go through this wall, I'm going to hear it fully. And this is just really great, because previously we never had an option to basically do anything even similar, except if you wanted to have different zones that would play an audio from for example selected parts. And this is also going to add a step of realism into Roblox games. But now I can of course add many different more of these if I wanted to, but we also have different presets. Right now I am on a custom one and I just pressed on something by accident. But anyways, we have the Omni Cardioid Figure 8 and a shotgun. So Omni is just the default option. This is for example something that my own microphone has. Then the Figure 8 is going to only emit the audio from these two directions. And the shotgun is, well, this. But again, something really important to note is that the spectrum also takes the direction of the part. And again, since this is the front, I don't have any audio right here. But if I were to increase it, you can basically just hear it change. 
Right now it's only emitting on the back, so again I'm just going to do a little showcase, like this. And the audio listener is also going to have these options of the distance and the angle attenuation, but this time it's only going to register them in this area that we set. So if I set it like this, it's only going to register the audio that's being emitted in front of the camera. So if I were to walk right here, right, I'm going to be able to basically just hear the music, but if I turn around, well, I'm not. And if I, for example, just make a change right here, I'm just going to be able to hear it. And this can be something really fun, for example, again, horror games and FPSs and overall different realistic games because it's going to add a lot more depth into them. Where if you wanted to, for example, just speak to someone in voice chat, you would basically just have to like look at them. But yeah, right now I'm going to set up something from the dev forum with a new feature of the audio echo. Where I'm going to have this part, right? And I'm just going to change the wires where this one is going to be the player into echo. And then, well, I actually need to add the audio echo instance. And this one is going to be the echo into emitter. Where I'm going to change this target instance to the echo and in the echo to emitter, the source is going to be the echo and the target is going to be the emitter. So if I do a playtest now, the audio is going to have this, well, echo. But I'm just going to change few things like the delay time and the feedback. And inside of the script, I'm going to make a reference to the player part which is the audio player that parent, and then the echo instant, which is the player part that audio echo. And now thinking about it, it's going to be easier if I just change the run context of the script to be client, just so I can get the distance between the, the player's camera and the part. So this should be wait for child, and I'm going to change the ramp time to be on 0.1. And I'm just going to zoom this in, just so you guys can see it a little bit better. And here I'm going to get the player service and the run service as well. Then I'm gonna get the local player, their character, and then the humanoid root part. And then I need to make a run service function, which is going to change the delay time, depending on the distance between the camera and the part. So I'm going to do run service that heartbeat and then connect a function. And here I'm going to get the distance as well as get the camera first, which is workspace that current camera, where this is the humanoid root part that position minus the camera that position that magnitude. Wait, hold on. I'm dumb. This is not supposed to be the humanoid root part. This is the player part that position. So I don't actually need to get the player. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm a little bit sick, but anyways. Right now I'm just going to print out the distance for testing. Where if I keep zooming my camera out from the part, you can see that it's increasing and decreasing if I zoom it in. So right now I want to change the echo that delay time to be equal to the distance divided by a number. And this number Roblox provided as the speed of light, which is 343. But it's going to be a little bit too much for the song. So for the presentation, I'm just going to do like 100. Now with the changes to the audio echo instance, instead of the audio crackling, it's going to have a special effect, which I'm going to present right now. And I only need to well move my camera around. So yeah, that swooshing sound, this was the new effect because previously, like I said, you would just hear crackling. And this effect is definitely going to be more realistic and I can see this one being used in, for example, something like bullet sounds in FPS games. But yeah, I'm going to show a better example in a minute while overviewing the dev forum post. And now for the dev forum. So here we have the new audio API features, like the directional audio, audio limiter and more. Where the Roblox staff is saying that they are excited to close out this year with some more updates to the new audio API. Like something really big which is the angle attenuation. Then the audio limiter, a new method for the audio player which gets the waveform, ramp time for the audio echo, and finally a default listener location. This in my opinion should have been there from the beginning and I also thank everyone for giving feedback. Now for the angle attenuation which is pretty massive and this new API basically just controls how loudly a sound is emitted or heard based on the direction rather than the distance and it's very similar to the distance attenuation API which I've shown in my previous video too but this time it extends them to work for listening angles like for example loudspeakers, megaphones and sonars or directional sensitive listeners like for example microphone patterns. And this was the first thing that came into my mind after seeing this update. 
But this just talks about the audio emitter and listener, basically having these two new methods and properties as well. And you can use them to improve realisms or invent new innovative gameplay mechanics, which is pretty awesome. But now to overview it, I'm just going to play this video which, just to present this effect again, as I did in studio. So again, this is if you wanted to, for example, just have an audio playing in only one direction, or a listener only registering audio from that direction too. And here we have the documentation for all of these methods. But now for the audio limiter, which is a new instance that sets a hard volume cap on the sound. And it responds instantly, ensuring that an audio stream is always quieter than the max level. And a waveform I basically an overview, but again it's only to visualize or preview the waveform of an audio before it plays. And now for the better showcase of the audio echo, where they have added a new runtime property, and now the audio echo is interpolating delay line, meaning that the changes to the delay time and the feedback are going to be smoothly updated over a specified number of seconds, instead of changing instantaneously. And this means that it's going to alter the pitch, instead of creating an unpleasant crackling. And right here there is a code example that I used, which again is going to create this effect right here. And again this one can be used in for example a lot of horror games, or maybe even shooter games for bullets. And finally this, the default listener location, where the sound service now includes a new default listener location property. And this property automatically spawns an audio listener and attaches it to the camera. Previously we just had to set it up manually every time when we wanted to use the audio API. And also I missed the player's head too, so it can attach it to the camera or the player's head too. And that's basically everything for the dev forum post as well. And it's also going to mark the end of this video. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks everyone for watching and see you guys.